So my dream growing up was actually to be a sea turtle researcher. Growing up in, well, Scandia, Minnesota, we had a plot of land in northern Wisconsin, and we were right on the lake, so I spent a lot of my childhood out with like a bright blue bucket and a worn out net, and I catched turtles and frogs and fish, basically any animal I could get my hands on. And it wasn't until we went to California, I think when I was maybe seven or eight and I saw a sea turtle for the first time in the aquarium. And at eight years old, I just kind of stuck it in my brain that I wanted to be a sea turtle researcher. And I went with it. I loved being outside. It was these transformational years being outside that led me to be an animal lover, appreciative of nature, adventure seeker, and kind of formed me into becoming a scientist and asking these questions. My biology teacher in high school was extremely influential and to helping me really recognize that you can make science your career. Uh, they were one of the first people that really showed me that you can become a scientist and you can become a teacher. They're not mutually exclusive, you can do both. I might not have been the most qualified or the most deserving of a scholarship, but funding students that have a small spark of passion or a small spark of joy and letting them know that their desires and dreams are worthy is really cool. Favorite part of science in general is just asking questions, getting your hands on it, failing a little bit too. Like you ask these questions, you try to do these things, and sometimes it doesn't always work out. That's what keeps me driving, just trying to understand and figure out how these animals work and how they're able to exist in this world. I started at the University of Minnesota Duluth and I am a third year PhD student at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. My first project was looking at invasive big-headed and silver carp, looking at their behavior and hearing capabilities. And my second project was actually in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. And that's where I got involved into the marine side of things. That's when I really fell in love with marine biology and kind of realized, okay, yeah, I can become a scientist, I can. I can do this. As a marine biologist, you need, I think, the ability to ask questions that no one either wants to ask or thinks of asking. Have the motivation and determination, even when your knowledge fails you or your equipment fails you, to keep going. And I guess just the innate curiosity to keep learning, learning about the world, trying to answer these questions, whether they're for the greater knowledge of humanity, whether it's to help conservation, but just in general, providing some type of information that, that we as society don't know yet. We have a thing for naming turtles, so every year our lab gets 16 hatchlings off the coast of North Carolina, and we have them in the lab to run various research projects with them. And then in May, we let them go, let them go into the Atlantic Gyre, and hopefully live out the rest of their life. Every year we have a theme. My first year, they're all named after noodles. And last year, they're named after Star Wars characters. And this year, they're named after rappers. In general, science belongs to everybody. I think if you or someone wants to pursue science, they definitely should. If they're really interested in pursuing it, I think the best bet is to try to get involved in either local organizations that align with research you're interested in, or if you're at the undergraduate level, trying to get involved in a research lab that's talking to your teaching assistants, your professors, other graduate students, really being able to figure out if science is for you and something you want to pursue. But science should belong to everybody and everyone should join if they want to. I'm extremely grateful for the Community Scholarship Foundation. They not only 
provided support throughout my undergrad, but also graduate school. So I received the Master's Award Scholarship, which has helped fund my higher education. Just knowing the support from my local community means everything to me. And also just support in general to keep pursuing my higher education, whether that's through tuition or buying books, a new computer. I'm just grateful for the Community Scholarship Foundation for supporting students like myself pursuing a higher education and other students around the Forest Lake area. After I get my PhD, I want to continue on in academia to become a professor, a researcher, teacher, mentor, and advocate for science. The whole process of, I guess, science takes a long time, but it's really worth it at the end to be able to discover something that only for one moment in time you're the only one that knows that this thing exists. In the spring of 2015, I submitted an essay to the Community Scholarship Foundation that said, I like turtles. And it's still true to that day because I am still studying sea turtles.